perineal sexuality educator, HPV. It's a sexually transmitted infection, but also it isn't. It can give you genital warts, or cancer, or both, or neither. If you get it, your body might get rid of it, or it might not, or you might choose to get vaccinated, but sometimes you can't. All of these things are true, which begs the question, what is the deal with HPV? I talked briefly about HPV, also known as the human papillomavirus, in my video on STIs, but I wanted to come back and look at it in a little more detail because HPV can be a tricky beast, and oftentimes when I talk to people, um, they're not exactly clear on what the virus is or how they can reduce their risk. And truth be told, even before making this video, I had to go back and review my HPV facts um, because, like I said, it's a little complicated. <laughs> HPV isn't just one virus. There are actually over 170 identified strains. Each one has a name, HPV1 through 170, whatever. And of those, about 40 can be spread through sexual contact. Sexually transmitted HPV is most commonly spread through penetrative, vaginal, or anal sex. It can sometimes also be spread through other sexual activities like uh, oral sex, hand jobs, fingering, scissoring, so on. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection on Earth. In North America, most of us who have partnered sex will have some type of HPV at some point in our lives. There are several strains of sexually transmitted HPV that don't really cause any obvious symptoms and oftentimes people have no idea that they have it. According to the World Health Organization, over 90% of HPV infections are cleared up by the body on their own without any medical intervention. There are some strains of HPV that the body doesn't clear, but again, they don't cause any significant symptoms or problems. But because there are so many different types of HPV, it's important to know that if you have or you had one of the low key strains, that doesn't mean that you are immune to some of the more serious types of HPV. It's also important to note that even if you don't have symptoms, you can still pass HPV along to a sexual partner. Let's talk about HPV and genital warts. Genital and anal warts are the most common sort of obvious symptomatic infection caused by HPV. There are two strains, HPV6 and HPV11, that are responsible for around 90% of genital or anal warts. The types of HPV that cause genital warts are different from the types of HPV that cause cancer, and genital warts in and of themselves aren't dangerous, but they can be, you know, itchy or uncomfortable and you may not like the way that they look. Genital warts are a little bit unpredictable. They can be different colors. There may be just one. They can be in clusters. They might clear up. You might get more. So if you have genital warts or suspect you have genital warts, you can talk to a doctor or a medical professional and find out what your treatment options are. And we are talking about a sexually transmitted infection, so again, just be aware that if you have genital warts or you notice genital warts, that is something that can be spread to a sexual partner. There are a few strains of HPV that can cause serious health problems and lead to cancers of the throat, the anus, the vagina, and most significantly, cervical cancer. In fact, almost all cervical cancer is caused by HPV. The most common strains that cause cervical cancer are HPV 16 and HPV 18. Basically, these high-risk strains of HPV can cause precancerous lesions on the cervix. Like with other strains of HPV, sometimes the body will clear these lesions on their own. Also, if someone is able to have regular pap smears, a doctor can often successfully treat the precancerous lesions before they develop into cancer. Left untreated, precancerous lesions on the cervix can progress and become full-blown cervical cancer. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the HPV vaccine. HPV vaccines like Gardasil typically protect against uh, HPV 6 and 11, which are common culprits for uh, genital and anal warts, and also protect against HPV 16 and 18, which, as I mentioned, are common culprits for developing cervical cancer. Often the vaccine is recommended for youths between the ages of 9 and 13, which 
freaks some parents out because why so early? Research has shown that the vaccine is most effective if it's given before people start engaging in any partnered sexual contact whatsoever. And so it's recommended for children in sort of late childhood, early adolescence, so that we can make sure to protect even those youth who may start having sexual contact sort of early in adolescence. And while HPV vaccines can significantly reduce the risk of developing cervical cancer, doctors still recommend that us cervix having folks still have pap smears on the reg. I am going to talk more about vaccinations and sexual health in my next video, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts or songs or poems or response videos, um, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also like, share, subscribe, click the bell, uh, all the channel hustle stuff that I'm supposed to say, but I don't like to say it. So, okay, that's done. That's all for now. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye. I like many people hate having pap smears, um, but they are beneficial. So once a year, I go to my doctor, let her see what's up inside my vagina. Uh, I am going to talk more about vaccinations and sexual health in my ne- where, where am I looking? Over there. The vaccinations are over there. They're not. I'm not that kind of a doctor. I don't have medicine here.